Hello, I'm Chris Brown, Fleet Group Editor at Bobbitt, and welcome to the next episode of Fast Forward Interview Series. Fast Forward is about connecting with leaders in fleet, tech, and automotive to show what the future holds for fleets of all types. In this episode, I interview Shlomo Crandis, CEO of the newly formed Wheels Donlin Lease Plan USA. Shlomo and I talk about the evolution of the fleet management space. We discuss new competitors to FMCs, which fleet segments are growing, and the new services that fleets are asking for today. Well, Shlomo, uh, welcome to this edition of Fast Forward Video Series. Hey, Chris, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Sure, great. Hey, let's just dive right into some questions here. So, you know, I, we're talking about the fleet management space. I mean, it's in just such a, a constant state of change. But in the last five years, I mean, listen, electrification has really taken root. And, and you know, there's there's a lot of new players in this space, in the fleet management space that are looking to, you know, consult uh, with fleets. There's EV only FMCs and new automaker programs, even dealership programs. And a lot of these are looking to kind of, you know, perhaps compete with the traditional FMCs. How do you see this space involving? And, um, you know, how do you think these, uh, how, the incumbent players uh, are going to survive and thrive in the new space? Yeah, so Chris, you're right that there's many new options for our clients. And in addition to the ones you mentioned, there's software as service providers. There's a number of vendors who are also trying to expand into the space. And one thing that we've always said in the company is that our clients make us better. And because we exist to serve the clients and the space is so much more competitive and the needs are growing every single day, it means we need to evolve much more quickly in some cases than we ever have before. And there's something that, uh, that Matt Dyer, who's one of my partners, um, has said that I think is 100% right. And he's talked about this being the most dynamic era in mobility management ever. And, you know, you've talked with other folks in our industry. We have supply chain issues, cost inflation. We've also talked about um, an era of OEM allocation, which is something uh, new to us, extended repair times. And as you said, there's the EV transition also. But there's a lot of cool things. Those are sort of issues that we help clients navigate. There's all sorts of new data strategies and we are adopting and we're helping our clients adopt new digitization tools um, that can really help us power the fleets. Our job in all of this is to support our clients through this period, to help them identify cost trends and advise them on the best vehicles and the best maintenance strategies that they should follow. And the strategies are gonna be different by fleet. Everyone agrees that they wanna control costs, but for some fleets, cost controls low inexpensive maintenance. For other fleets, cost controls low downtime. And sometimes the objectives can conflict. You know, the fleet karma is low cost, low downtime, high driver productivity, and high driver contentment. You know, and our goal is to deliver all of that as best as we can. Um, our company will lead the way in EV and connected vehicle adoption, data analysis, use of tools. Um, we feel it's the responsibility of the OEMs to bring product and product range to the market and getting EVs into the market is something that the OEMs, um, need to do. And we're OEM agnostic and our company has the most robust capability to directly source nameplates from North America, Japan, Germany, China, Italy, you, you get the picture. It's about the right vehicle for the right task. And we'll help our clients do that. Um, and then we'll promote our existing capabilities that a lot of the competitors really don't have. It doesn't mean they won't build it over time, but we can source vehicles, we can manage the vehicles, we keep them legal. Um, and we have systems and know-how, and most importantly, the people who have expertise in doing this. And, um, a, I'm sure we'll talk more about this as we go, but being able to power the vehicles is, is a new thing that we're also focused on. So we can source, install, and finance 
charging hardware. Well, I love that term, uh, fleet karma. I, I guess I'll, I'll give you the copyright on that one. Um, you know, listen, Abe, let's talk, you know, fleet, se- what fleet segments do you see that are growing for FMCs in general? And, um, you know, which ones are Wheels Donlin, Lease Plan USA, if I can call this new conglomerate that? Um, what ones are are you looking to to serve? I mean, we've deliveries out there. Uh, any other new niches that are coming into play? You know, there's there's new niches and there's also unserved classes of um, customers. We do see a class of mobility users who either do it themselves or only partially use FMCs. And we see opportunities to make people aware of our capabilities and give them a better experience. Um, there's definitely opportunities in the medium and heavy duty truck space. These fleets and the management of them is really similar to the fleet thinking that all of the FMCs use, but there are sometimes different service networks and and different math that we'll do in order to optimize those fleets. Um, We already have a truck and equipment team at lease plan and Wheels Donlin recently started a company called Capteris to provide clients with a much broad range of leasing alternatives. And the idea here is to make it simpler and easier for our clients to work with us as a vendor and to give them a, a really wide range of alternatives on their leasing. We've seen more custom solutions for very large fleets. You know, we call them mega fleets sometimes. And last mile delivery is, is a form of mega fleet. And we have an expertise in that also. And the last item, not that it's the last item we'll cover, but the last one I'll talk about is um, our focus on ESG. So Wheels Down the Lease Plan is um, a silver rated by Ecovetus. And we're on our own ESG journey and working together with clients that are focused on that to identify initiatives where we can work together and help drive new opportunities for the clients and sometimes also for our own company. Sure. You know, I I think we're leading down this path. You touched on some of it, but, um, you know, are any of your clients, um, the new types or even the incumbents, are are they looking for sort of like new lease structures or just ways to acquire vehicles based on changing business needs? I mean, you know, we've seen subscriptions uh, make a splash and then stumble, and now they've kind of reappeared a little bit. I mean, do subscriptions have a niche in the fleet market? So I'll start with leases and then I'll get a little bit to subscription. So our clients do look to us to provide thought and guidance, but also to listen to them. Um, With our combination of our companies, we have very robust open-end and closed-end leasing alternatives. And I couldn't have said that um, just a week ago. Um, In the equipment space, we can do fair market value leases, early buyout leases, track leases, flam leases. Um, In the fleet space, we can do self-funding structures for clients who want the benefit of a lease, but they want to use their own capital. Um, We do different forms of synthetic leases for clients who are interested in capturing tax benefits or other benefits of the lease. So we are extremely flexible. And when clients are looking to achieve a certain objective through the lease, we'll work with them to meet that objective. Um, We're we're also helping clients with a reimbursement solution. So there's a case where they don't even want to, to provide the vehicle. They want their driver to provide the vehicle and we can help with that also. Um, With regard to subscription, um, we're very flexible and we have some instances where we've been supporting subscription companies, either by providing services or even providing financing. But we have seen people getting in and out of that. We've seen some OEMs double down on it. We've seen some like, like Ford get out of it. And at this point, we're not really sure where it's going, but um, it is an area where we're experimenting and supporting it where it makes sense. Sure. You know, FMCs uh, traditionally have a menu of products and services really that drive value to their clients, right? Um, I mean, we've got this EV space that's growing and, you know, are there services in that space that are 
uh, that clients are going to need that are sort of different from the the you know traditional menu of options? So th there's a lot of parts of EV, and some of them are EV related. Some are. Yeah. Um, with EVs, there's much more data on much more use of data that we can do by combining um, connected vehicle data that we get off the EVs with data that we get from other sources, including data uh, about the driver that either comes from their mobile app or from other sources. And there's so much power uh, that, and that we can provide to our clients by combining this data and turning it into learnings and actions to manage the fleets in a more efficient way, as well as in a safer way and uh, produce better routing. In the EV space specifically, uh, the introduction of EVs requires us to implement a whole different um, process for getting vehicles out into the ecosystem. You know, it starts out with a consultation to determine whether EVs even work for the application that the client wants to do. Are they going to be happy with the total cost of ownership with an EV? Um, we need to do an assessment of whether the infrastructure is sufficient in the different geographies where the EV is going to be operated. We also have to focus on the driver. Some drivers are good candidates for EV and some of it is about their mental approach and their openness to driving an EV. Some of it has to do with whether we can put a charger in their home. And if you would have asked me even three years ago, are we gonna be in the business of doing home contracting? And I would have said no, but uh, now we're doing assessments of people's homes to determine whether they have 220 volt electricity, whether they have asbestos in their homes. And we do have to do all sorts of things that we would have never dreamed of just a few years ago. Um, on the EV journey, as you mentioned earlier, there's new OEMs and many of these OEMs don't have dealerships. They don't have support models. There's a, a lot here, which is really fertile ground, but we don't know where it's going yet, but we're gonna be here to support it in whatever direction it goes in. And along with EV, there's all sorts of reporting and data analysis, not just about the driver and the route, but also about the CO2 emissions and helping clients quantify um, the, their ESG objectives and helping to them to prove to their stakeholders that they're making progress. Okay, hey, I wanna like just look forward in the last two questions here, Shlomo. Um, let's so supply chain issues. I mean, availability of vehicles as, as this kind of evolves into 2023. I mean, gee, like you know, in Q3, things were still looking pretty, pretty dire. I mean, um, what's as your take now? Um, you know, moving into 2023, has it kind of improved, uh, worsened, or kind of stayed the same compared to a few months ago? I would say on the question of the supply chain and whether we can get vehicles or not. The, the overall general picture is things are pretty much staying the way they have been. So getting vehicles is more difficult than we would like, more difficult than our clients would like. We do sometimes see pockets of opportunity. And sometimes that's when we find vehicles, you know, out in the wild, which means off of dealer lots. Um, but we've also seen opportunities sometimes with OEMs who have close relationships with some of our clients to grab vehicles. And because we are a, um, OEM agnostic, we can sometimes get vehicles from OEMs that our client doesn't normally use um, because the OEMs wanna do some conquest sales. So I'm not saying we can do this all the time, but we're always looking for opportunities. And sometimes we can uh, execute some unusual things to help clients. Uh, any trends on the horizon that fleet managers should keep their eye on? I mean, you know, they, they could be pain points uh, on the horizon, but also opportunities. Yeah, so on the horizon, change is going to continue at an accelerated pace. And we all, you know, we're getting used to it because we're in the midst of a lot of change and bringing our three companies together. But the change also means that there's going to be opportunities to use data to run the fleets more effectively. People are going to have to look out for some of the things we talked about when we talked about, you know, uh, the dynamic era that we're in. 
um, costs are going to be moving up and down. Uh, Wall Street talks about a potential recession. And th that may actually produce opportunities because it may spring some vehicles free that companies can use and companies tend to take very long term perspective. Um, you know, in, internally, I have to say, we, we have tremendous opportunities um, to serve our clients. We have the best employees who are passionate about helping our clients succeed. And so for our existing clients, I think they're going to get an even better experience for folks who don't work with us. Working with the new company we're creating is going to be a huge opportunity. And it's not just me saying this. I have fantastic partners with Matt Dyer and Tom Callahan. And we all have a different take on things. We come from different backgrounds, have different perspectives. And as we come together, we are going to offer the most robust thinking and the best experience that our clients and our prospective clients uh, can ever get in our space. Well, uh, exciting times ahead for Wheels, Donlin, Lease Plan USA. Hey, Shlomo, thank you for joining us today on Fast Forward. No, Chris, I appreciate the questions and it was fun. 